This lecture is part of a series of lectures on modular forms and will be about Hecke operators for modular functions. Um, so I'll introduce Hecke operators in, in, in three different ways. So the first way is as follows. Suppose f is a modular function, so f of a tau plus b over c tau plus d is equal to f of tau whenever a, b, c, d is a little 2 by 2 integer matrix with determinant 1. And now let's look at the function f of 2 tau. Um, well, this isn't quite invariant under SL2z because what we've done is we've changed tau to 2 tau. In other words, we're, we're sort of acting on tau with the matrix 2, 0, 0, 1. This means that f of 2 tau is invariant under SL2z conjugated by this matrix. In other words, it's invariant under the group of matrices of the form A, B over 2, 2, C, D. And um, the intersection of this with the matrices in SL2z consists of all matrices of the form A, B, 2, C, D. In other words, the, the lower left entry is even. So these matrices form a group called gamma 0 of 2. And we notice that gamma 0 of 2 has index 3 in SL2 of z. So in other words, this function isn't quite invariant under SL2z, but it's invariant under a subgroup of index 3. So we can make it invariant just by summing over three cosets. And if you work out what these cosets are, you find it's f of 2 tau plus f of tau over 2 plus f of tau plus 1 over 2. So these correspond to um, three, the three cosets of gamma naught of 2 in SL2z. Um, in fact, you can see directly that um, these two functions are invariant un under tau goes to, sorry, that they're exchanged under tau goes to tau plus 1. And this um, functions map to itself under tau goes to tau plus 1. On the other hand, if you look at the action of tau goes to minus 1 over tau, it exchanges these two functions and maps this function to itself, although that, that, that takes a little bit of work to see. So, um, so the sum of these three functions is, is actually invariant under SL2z and is therefore another modular function. So this operator is sometimes called T2 of f, and it's called a Hecker operator. So let's see um, what it looks like in a particular example. So I'm going to take f of tau to be j of tau, and I'm going to remove its constant term because that just causes unnecessary complications. And let's look at the Fourier series expansion. So it's q to the minus 1 plus 196884q. Eight eight plus 2149370q squared, plus 8642999970q cubed, plus 20245856256q to the 4. And I'm actually going to use all of these. Um, so we work out what, and well, wait a moment. Um, it's a bit of a pain writing out these numbers. So let's call that one C1, C2, C3 and C4. So f of 2 tau is just q to the minus 2 um, plus c1q squared plus c2q to the 4 and so on. Um, f of tau over 2 plus f of tau plus 1 over 2 um, is um, equal to um, 2c2q plus 2c4q squared plus 2c6q cubed and so on, as you can see. Um, so if we um, add these up, we get q to the minus 2 plus um, 2c2q and so on. And this is, this is a modular function. Now, we know that any modular function which is holomorphic on the upper half plane is a polynomial in J, or for that matter, in F. And you can find out what polynomial it is by looking at the 
at the, at, at the negative powers of q. So we see this is in fact equal to f of tau squared, so that accounts for q to the minus 2 and q to the minus 1. And then we've got to get the constant term right, and if you look at the constant terms you see you must put in a minus 2 um, times 196884 in order to kill off the constant term of this. So, so f of 2 tau plus f of tau over 2 plus f of tau plus 1 over 2 is equal to f of tau squared minus this constant here. And now we can look at the coefficient of q squared in both sides. So the coefficient of q squared of this is going to be 2c3 plus c1 squared. And the coefficient of q squared of the sum of these is going to be 2c4 plus c1. So we've found this strange identity between the coefficients c1, c2, c3 and c4. And as you can imagine, we get some even more complicated identities if you look at higher um, powers of q, or for that matter if you change f of 2 tau to f of n tau. So we're getting some very complicated nonlinear identities between the coefficients of um, elliptic modular functions. So that's the first way of introducing the Hecker operator. Um, the second way is you think of f as being a function of lattices in, in C, where the function is um, homogeneous of degree zero. So you remember f of tau corresponds to a function of the lattice generated by 1 and tau. Now if we've got a lattice L, what we can do is we can just sum over all lattices contained in L such that L over M has order equal to 2. And we can take f of this sublattice, and this will also be a function of lattices. So here's a way of going from a function of lattices to another function of lattices just by taking a sum over sublattices of index some number. So let's figure out what the sublattices of a lattice generated by 1 and tau are. Um, so sorry, it should be 0, 1, 2. Here we have tau, tau plus 1, tau plus 2, and so on. And there are three sublattices. So we can either take a sublattice um, um, generated by um, 2 and tau, or we can take a sublattice um, generated by 2 and tau plus 1, or we can take a sublattice generated by um, 1 and 2 tau. And you can easily check that these are the only three sublattices of index 2. And you can see that this operation is really the same as the previous operation. So, so th 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 this corresponds to taking f of tau over 2, and this corresponds to taking f of tau plus 1 over 2, and this corresponds to taking f of 2 tau. So um, summing over la sublattices of some given degree is related to the previous operation. However, I should say it's not actually quite the same. Um, if we apply this to 4, then we might try taking a sum like f of 4 tau, and if we sum over um, all the um, over all the conjugates of a subgroup, we would get f of 4 tau plus f of 2 tau plus 1 over 2 plus f of um, um, tau over 4 plus f of tau plus 1 over 4 plus f of tau plus 2 over 4 plus f of tau plus 3 over 4. However, if we sum over all sublattices of index 2, we would get an extra term corresponding to f of 2 tau plus 2, uh, sorry, 2 tau plus 0 over 2, which is just the same as f of tau. So um, when when we're looking at looking at f of 
n tau with n divisible by a square, you find there's actually a slight difference between these two methods of introducing Hecker operators. Um, so a third method of introducing Hecker operators is a little bit less intuitive, but it's actually the most convenient for calculations. So this third method, we look at all matrices of determinant 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a sum over determinant of a, b, c, d equals 2 of f of a tau plus b over c tau plus d. Well, that's kind of stupid because this sum is infinite, so it doesn't make sense. So um, we also notice that f is invariant under SL2z, so we should really um, only take cosets of this by the things of determinant equal to 1. And if we take things of determinant 2, um, modulo things of determinant 1, we're just looking at sort of left cosets, and determinant 1 acting on the left means we can do sort of all row operations to these. And if you've got a determinant 2 matrix and you're allowed to do row operations to it, then you see that every matrix of determinant 2 can be reduced to one of the following three matrices. Um, because using row operations you can make the first two, one of the first entries in the first column 0 and then the other one has to be 1 or 2 and then for the second one you can add multiples of, of this entry here to that one there to make it, to make it um, 0 in this case or 0 and 1 in this case. Um, so we find there are three coset representatives for determinant 2 matrices modulo determinant 1 matrices and as you see these correspond again to 2 tau tau over 2 and tau plus 1 over 2. So again we get the same Hecker operator. Um, notice that this is automatically a um, modular function because the set of 2 by 2 matrices is, is preserved under right multiplication by things of determinant 1. So what, what we're using really is, is the fact that this is a union of double cosets of, of SL2. Um, so, um, general case, um, what we do is we just replace 2 by your favourite integer n, and we're going to get a Hecker operator Tn. Um, so I gave three methods, um, and I said that methods 1 and 2 are actually slightly different, and it turns out the nice version of the Hecker operator really uses methods 2 and 3, and method 1 um, gives an invariant modular function, but it's not, not, a, not, not quite so nice. And it's easiest to work out what these are using the third method, so we're summing over j of a tau plus b over c tau plus d, where a b, c, d is in things of determinant n, modulo things of determinant 1. And as before, we can do column operations on something of determinant n, and we find that they all look like matrices of the form n over d, 0, d, and here we have an entry from 0, 1 up to d minus 1. Here d is a divisor of n. So, so you run through all divisors of n and for each divisor you take, you take this matrix here. So we're, we're summing over um, f of n over d tau plus 0, 1 up to d minus 1 divided by d, if you see what I mean. Um, and um, we can work out what the what this looks like in the case n is prime, which is particularly easy because then the only divisors d are 1 and um, n, and let's put n to be a prime p so that I can remember it's prime. And what you're then looking at is the operation taking f to f of p tau plus f of tau over p plus f of tau plus 1 over p all the way up to plus f of tau plus p minus 1 over p. And we can work out what this does on the Fourier expansion of f. So if f is equal to sum of c n q to the, so c m q to the m, then um, taking f to p tau takes this to c m q to the m p. On the other hand, this sum here takes this to, um, 
cm q to the m over p times p um, whenever p divides m um, and naught if p does not divide m. So if, if you've got a sort of Fourier expansion that looks like this c minus 2 q to the minus 2 plus c minus 1 q to the minus 1 plus c naught plus c1 q plus c2 q squared and so on. Um, let's just take p equals 2 so I can actually write things out. So what you do, um, one of these operations you, 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 you sort of expand out the ci so you get c naught c minus 1 q to the minus 2 and so on um, c1 q squared. So here we're, we're, we're sort of moving everything outwards by a factor of 2 and you also have a um, this sum here corresponds to moving everything inwards by a factor of 2 and multiplying it by 2. So we get 2c0 from there and here we get 2c2 from here and here we get uh, sorry 2c minus 2 and here we get 2c2 and 2c4 and so on. So on Fourier coefficients the Hecker operator sort of um, moves the coefficients in by some factors and also moves them out by some factors. Um, so um, when, you, when you're doing a Hecker operator for n, um, some number that isn't prime, it gets a little bit more complicated because you have to move everything in or out by various factors depending on what um, the factors of n are. Okay, so next lecture we're going to give an application of Hecker operators of modular functions in order to prove the product formula for the um, elliptic modular function.